right, good morning, everybody. How's everybody today? Excellent. So who here, I got to ask, start with some questions. Who here feels that they're disrupting their industry right now at this point in time? Hands? Cool. Who thinks they could be doing a little bit better? They could create, be creating some disruption. Fantastic. And who's in the wrong meeting hall here? OK, I'm going to talk to you about the art of digital disruption. And by art, what I'm talking about is how do we actually put the pieces together? How do we actually define the market? How do we actually define what it is that we need to be able to do? We're going to be talking, taking you on, I'm going to be taking you on a journey, rather, in terms of how do we actually put these pieces together, what the industry is like, what we could be doing, and what we can be doing uh, for the future as well. So today, nobody's going to argue with me here, right? We live in a massive, global, connected, disruptive economy. Who disagrees? Nobody. OK, good. Now, why, why is that? Why do you think that we're we've being disrupted nonstop, right? A lot of business factors come into play here. How we actually determine that is that business is not the same as it used to be. Even if we look back, and I'm going to be showing you some examples uh, from previous. If we look back, what have what have some of the the companies that were just massive, massive companies? What did they do wrong? What did they do right? Did they do, obviously, if they've been around for a while, they had to have done something right. So we're going to take a look at that. So the digital revolution is here, right? It's time to be able to move forward. It's time to sort of accept that. I'm not here to sell you digital marketing. I'm not here to sell you that, you know, online is a fantastic way of doing business. You already know that, right? You, you need to be able to take these pieces to be able to move them forward, to be able to understand how it is that you're going to be able to to grow your business. The only thing is that it's not going to be televised, right? So according to Steve Case, you might remember him from American Online. He created that back in the 19, 1985. He determined that there's three waves of digital disruption. The first wave is what we saw in 1995 to 1999. That's when we started to build the technology. And I'm going to go back to this theme a few times. The technology was established primarily in that early period. So this was when we were creating the infrastructure. This is where we're getting the internet uh, working. This is where we're starting to sort of understand how it actually fits together, how the pieces work with businesses and consumers. Because don't forget, it started as a sort of a consumer side. Yes, there was sort of the government side, but it started from the consumer side. The second wave from 2000 to 2015 this is where we started to see, and this is where a lot of companies started to grow, and this is where we had the massive explosion of companies, of startups with apps and um, services and social media and everything that you can imagine to help build this community. So we're moving from the technology. We're next moving into how do we actually use the technology, and now from you know, 2016 and going forward, it's like how do we actually connect everything together? And that's the incre ingredient here is that the internet is ubiquitous, right? Everybody's checking their phones on mobile, on iPads, and you name it. This technology is now ubiquitous. And I'm not here again to talk to you about the technology because in my mind, none of you need to be technology driven companies to actually to survive and disrupt. And that's the exciting part, is that you don't need to be a startup, right? You don't need to um, have that revolutionary idea, OK? What you need to do is create a platform to create an ecosystem that allows you to create that environment for disruption. And that's what I'm talking about. In the third wave, disruption cannot be a mantra, right? You can't just talk about it anymore. Because as we've seen, those companies that just talk, they're the ones that really aren't around anymore. So we have to build a strategy that says, this is how we can put things together. This is how we can start to disrupt our industry. This is how we can put the pieces together. Now, while it's nice, I mean, a couple of examples of, of disruption that I'm sure you're familiar with. I drove in an Uber this morning, right? Staying at an Airbnb this morning. I checked into Facebook as well. Didn't watch any Netflix. Uh, checked into Instagram, and uh, I don't actually use Alibaba, 
But the point is, is that these are sort of the traditional, com these are traditional companies now that most businesses are saying, yeah, I wanna be the next Uber. I wanna be the next Facebook. Oh, I wanna be the next Airbnb, right? How many companies here have sort of thought about that? It's like, yeah, I wanna be just like those guys. Anybody? No? <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> you must be in the wrong room then. <laughs> or I, no, I'm in the wrong room. Just kidding. Um, but what we want to do is we want to take these ideas that they've started and say, hey, how do we apply this to everybody, right? And what I'm, what I'm here to, part of the message here is that it doesn't need to be about the technology. If you look at those companies, right, they're taking the technology and they're utilizing it for their own business, okay? Uber, Airbnb, B, Facebook, Netflix, what are they? That's the third wave that I'm talking about, okay? They are taking the existing technology, they are utilizing it for their business to disrupt their industry. Like, wow, isn't that a great model? Don't you think? I love it, right? Because they don't need to be specific technology developers, they can get on with the business of business. They don't have to worry about that stuff. But what we have to do is we have to up the game, okay? It's not just a matter of taking a website and taking a social media site and getting you know, 200 million followers. We have to build a value proposition, one that reson resonates with your audience because that is where the value is seen. And whether you're business to business or business to consumer, it doesn't really matter. You all have customers, right? We want to be able to create this value that says, hey, this is a fantastic business. I am able to exchange that value. I'm able to provide that value as the business, um, the business leader. So we need to look at it more from the buyer's journey. How many here have a seller's process, a selling process? Yeah, I think we all do, right? Which is good, you need a process, which I'm going to outline very specifically as well. The challenge with a seller's process is that what does that mean? That means I'm taking it from the seller. I'm trying to sell you something, right? And who likes to be sold something? Not all the time, right? Sometimes we do when it's like a big purchase or whatever. Sometimes it's just, hey, let's get on with business. I am the buyer. I want to be able to buy something. Show me your value that says that I can actually connect with that. So we need to move from a selling perspective to a buying perspective. And that's how we make that, that differentiation. And as I said, you don't need to be a startup. Who here's a startup? So I'm not gonna piss anybody off. <laughs> Any startups? Oh, okay, a couple, all right. Like brand new or spank, brand spanking baby? Two years, okay, yeah, all right. Well, I'm here to tell you that most businesses are not startups. They're past that stage, right? They're in their teens, they're in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, whatever. Right? So you need to be able to do something despite having all these fantastic unicorns and these fancy companies doing this and that and, and this sort of thing. So we can make a difference. And you don't even need to be this good looking guy, right? Go about doing business. Go about creating the business based on your value, based on what you can actually do and what your buyer is actually looking for. And I couldn't talk about disruption without a picture of a dinosaur, right? <laughs> Because every presentation you've had on disruption, if you've seen one, probably has a dinosaur, right? It has nothing to do with disruption, so let's get that over and done with, right? <laughs> but I had to show you a dinosaur. But what I did want to show you or tell you is that there was this one magnificent beast called the pancake crocodile. And this is like 200 million years ago, so uh, we're going back before the internet age, right? So that's the preview of the internet. Uh, anyway, what it did was it would sit very quietly in the riverbed or the water, and I was watching this on Discovery Channel, and it would just sit there, and what it would do is it would have its jaws open, and it's got a big, flat pancake crock, right? So it's got this big, flat mouth that could eat things. And what it would do is it would sit there and wait and wait and wait and wait until a fish came by, or food, or smaller crocodiles, I guess. I have no idea what it ate, and then smack lunch time, right? So what we want to do is, is take a look. Well, what is this actually, what, what kind of strategy is this? And I know crocodiles in, in the Paleozoic era had nothing to do with uh, marketing or business development, but what they were doing was passive. They would wait. 
wait, 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 wait for their lunch. So who here waits for their lunch, right? Not too many businesses will survive if they do that. So what we need is we need an active process. We need a dynamic strategy that says these are the pieces that we need to be able to put in place. Enough about Crocs. The other side of the argument is, well, maybe this whole digital disruption is killing businesses. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But we have seen some very reputable businesses that have kind of tanked, lost a tremendous amount of value. They've been around for a long, long time. So what happened to them, right? Were they just sort of sitting, waiting for their lunch to come? Or were they actually doing something active? Were they actually doing something dynamic that says, hey, this is, we need to, this thing is coming like a freight train. We need to be able to adjust to it. We need to be able to understand what it's about. Blockbuster, Sears, Kodak, Borders, Atari, right? Everybody knows these companies. These used to be part of our everyday vernacular, right? We used to go to Blockbuster. We used to go to Sears. We used to do our pictures with Kodak and buy our books at Borders and we used to play video games on Atari, but where are they? Nowhere to be seen. So we kind of need to ask ourselves, perhaps disruption is actually part of business. Who feels that disruption maybe, just maybe, it's a part of every single day business? Does anybody agree with that? Yeah, so maybe it is more of a challenge to be able to understand that, hey, everything is changing, everything is transforming, everything is disrupting. And if we can actually do that, wow, we can stand back and say, I know how to do this now. I'm not scared of it. I'm not worried about becoming the next Kodak moment. I'm not worried about becoming Blockbuster because I'm building a process. I'm building a system that says this is what we can do on a daily, regular, strategic basis. And that's how you start to implement is by understanding that. So what is your greatest work? And I'm not going to get some examples, but you know, what is it about your business? What is it about your industry? Healthcare, pharma, biotech, information, financial services. What is it about your industry that makes you great? Right? What makes you fantastic? And I'm not saying you need to be disruptive. I'm not saying you need to be Elon Musk. I'm not saying you need to have, you know, a tremendous app coming up. But what is it? What is your greatest work? Because we're going to take our greatest work and what do we need to do next? And that's one of the, the key critical elements of disruption is to say, okay, frame your greatest work here, but what are we gonna do next, right? How are we gonna actually achieve that? What is it that we're gonna put in place to be able to do that? And today, what are we focused on? The buy button, right? And yes, this is, B2B and B2C, but we're so focused on that one little action that says, buy my shit, right? Buy my stuff, buy my cars, buy my business services, buy my applications, you name it. But we become fixated on buy, 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 and again, as I said earlier, you know, what, what does that mean to the, val to the value of that customer, that end customer? What are they thinking? They don't really care. They don't really care. They're thinking, what's in it for me? So when you have, you know, the buy button, whatever it is, we are fixated on your finger. Everybody stick up their finger, please. <laughs> we're one click away from disaster because this is all we're thinking about as an action. Buy, buy, buy my stuff, buy my, buy my SHIT, right? But we need to change that dynamic. We need to be able to say, well, how do we change this pointed finger from disaster to something that actually works? Social selling, right? We've all heard that big buzzword. Who here has a social, social selling program? Yeah, and don't worry, I'm not gonna embarrass you. <laughs> um, it's a great idea, it's fantastic, but what is it missing? It's missing that ecosystem to say, hey, how do we actually connect these dots? Yes, we can um, gain leads, we can gain some customers through social selling, like absolutely. But what a lot of businesses are selling is let's jump on to the next big thing. Let's jump on to a so social selling, let's get our, our leads through LinkedIn and let's set up a campaign and that sort of thing. The fact is, 
that's not going to save your business. You need to think long term because it's, you know, what's coming next, as I talked about as well. And the reason why is that we've traditionally been shown, well, you know, let's talk about feelings and let's talk about, you know, how to actually grow our customer so that they can be self-actualized, right? We've probably seen this diagram in all of our marketing classes, right? Let's talk about physiological safety, love, belonging, esteem, and then they become customers, right? Wouldn't it be cool if we could just use this fancy pyramid, social sell some stuff, go to LinkedIn, get some massive customers, right? But guess what? It doesn't work. Why? Because we're looking at it from the, buy, from, the, sorry, from the selling perspective. We're trying to sell something. We're not getting somebody to buy. And I hope you can see the difference there. The buyer, again, they're looking at something totally different. They're looking at, do I know you? Right? Do I like you? And do I trust you? And if I can understand those things, I'm going to buy from you. If, of course, I have that need, that specific requirement, right? I'm not going to buy your stuff if I don't, you know, uh, need it. But let's be honest, right? Do I know you, like you, and trust you? And that's the key ingredient that we need to put in place to able to start this disruptive process. We need to be able to understand that this disruptive process looks at, at it from the customer perspective. Common thread here, businesses that disrupt their industries become remarkable. So you're probably thinking, okay, well, that's great, Doyle. You're talking a lot, and I'm falling asleep. I had a little bit of breakfast. But let's keep going. What I want to show you is an actual strategy that we can take this forward to say, here's the elements. This is putting all these pieces together. This is being able to understand that how do we get this moving, right? Because talk is talk. Talk is cheap, right? You can have many speakers just talking about something. But unless you, you're able to do something, you're no better off. But do you have a disruptive strategy right now? And again, anybody? Anybody? No? Yes. Fantastic. Cool. Every business should have a disruptive strategy if they weren't want to survive this third wave. And I'm not saying that to scare you. I'm not saying that to say, oh, well, Steve Case said that. And Steve Case, he's a brilliant guy. I'm saying that because the examples have shown that those businesses that don't do this, again, they're nowhere to be seen in some cases or just pushed off to the side. So I'm going to show you a five-step process that you can take, you can answer questions for. And again, this is just a framework. It's not a detailed understanding. This is to say, how do we actually organize all this information? I've been talking about an awful lot here, right? But how do we actually organize these pieces to make a step towards disruption? How do we actually organize it to, to say, hey, this is the business? that we want to be able to produce. Number one, your online purpose. And I'm going to get into these in a little bit. Number two, patterns of behavior. Number three, digital platforms. And can anybody read upside down? I can't. Uh, so number four is process and methods. And number five is how do you produce that value, that value that I said is so instrumental in every single business, yet we, we fail to recognize it. So number one, purpose. Every company has a purpose, right? Is there one company in here who doesn't have a purpose? No? Nobody's brave enough? <laughs> um, the fact is, is that you have to look at that and say, OK, well, how do we actually apply that purpose? How do we actually put it in place? What is that why, right? Do we want to be just an average business, or do we want to be a five-star hotel? And can you actually identify that why to say, this is why people will buy from me, not why you exist, right? Why will people interact with me? Why will people, people be able to understand what I do? Why will businesses want to do business with me? And that's really what we need to look at. We need to define that why. How can we do business better? We also want to take a look at patterns. And one of the interesting things I, I spoke with a number of you last night um, was that a lot of businesses are missing the point. And you know, if you think social selling is kind of, and having a website and social media is, is really going to work for you, then mm, you're kind of missing the point, right? Patterns are what happens when people actually interact with you. So we can see what's going on, OK? So take off your 
your blinders and say, I want to look at my customer. I want to understand who they are. I want to be able to see what they're doing. I want to be able to understand how they're interacting. I want to be able to see these patterns that say, this is, this is where my customer goes. This is what they do, right? This isn't rocket science. This isn't, you know, biomedical advancement. This is saying I, I need to understand what my customer does so that I can better respond to them. I can better provide that value. And unless we actually dig into it, and there's so many tools out there, that's why I'm saying like, we're not about the technology. Disruption is not about tech. It's about getting those tools, because they're all there. We said that. That was stage, stage number two. All those tools are there. Yes, we're being refined, and we're refining them now. But all those tools are there to be able to go in and see what exactly your customer is doing and how they're doing it, using social media, using website delivery, using marketing metrics and marketing return on investment. But we're scared of it. But you need to be able to stand back and address that, saying, what is happening? What are these patterns that I'm seeing that will help the business, that will help connect uh, with a better understanding? Now, platform, what's that? Who has a platform? Yeah, what, what, but what does a platform mean to you? Website, what else? An app? We've got... Uh, LinkedIn pages, who's on LinkedIn? Yeah, okay. But what other pieces of your platform do you have that you're not actually paying attention to? And how do we actually integrate all these pieces together? And again, this was another recurring issue that, that a lot of businesses last night were speaking of, is how do we actually integrate? Because we've built these huge systems. We've, we now have a social media department, and we have a um, a social selling department and an app development department and a website development part, uh, department and whatever, content developments, right? We've got all these pieces, but they're not talking together. So what we need to be able to do is we need to cut, cut those silos down and say, how do we actually create a platform that integrates everything, that says this is what our business is about? We can be anywhere, at any time, in front of our customer delivering value so we need to cut through all that, that BS and say, here's our platform. Here's the stage, think of it like this. Here's the stage that we're on. We've got social media and we're social selling and websites and content and videos and, and apps and um, strategy and marketing and all this kind of stuff. But guess what? We're all on the same stage together. So unless we're creating a platform that creates that, 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 um, that concreteness of it all, we're gonna miss the point. We don't have a platform. We be, need to be able to look at it. It's how do we put all these pieces together to stand and talk, right? Talk about it, deliver value, get our, our customer to, to say, hey, I get this, I get you guys. I know you, I like you, and I trust you. I wanna do business with you. And unless you have an integrated platform, that's not gonna happen. Number four is the process. Now, deep down, we get up in the morning, we you know, shower, shave, whatever it is. Uh, we get to work, we do this, we do that. We follow a process. The point is, is that what we, when we get to the business, that process, for whatever reason, gets thrown out the door. Because it's too complicated, there's too many pieces, there's, we don't understand how it fits and, and that sort of thing. But imagine what could happen if you could build a process that helps you make those strategic decisions, that helps you make those specific content marketing plans, that help you make those specific lead generation type uh, items. Right now, most businesses, and cor please correct me if I'm wrong, you could say this if you want, but most businesses don't have a process, yet they're the ones who are suffering the most. So, and again, I talked a little bit about it earlier, but is this a sales process? Well, great, fantastic, you know, thumbs up, two thumbs up for you. But what is that selling process doing for your customer who's not trying to be sold to, he wants to buy something? And again, unless you have these processes lined out, nothing's gonna happen. So imagine if you could create a process that outlines this. This is exactly the, the process that my customer takes when they're looking for our product, step one, two, three, four, five, whatever it takes. So do you, do you not think then that you could then show that to your customer and say, oh, wow, that, that, I'm familiar with this process, right? 
So now I know, like, and I trust you because I see what's going on. And that's the fascinating part is that if we could sit down and part of your strategic planning is saying, guys, 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 you know, we're all, all over here and all over there. Let's make a process. Let's define what it is that we're trying to, trying to do, the steps that we need to take, that our customer will follow us or create the leadership for that. And that's how we do that. The last one is produce, okay? Who here blogs? Anybody? <laughs> yeah. Who would rather not blog? Yeah, most of us, right? The fact is, is that we've kind of, again, if you're thinking bigger picture disruption, right now most businesses have said, oh yeah, I've got a blog, I've got a blog, I've got a blog, I've got a blog. And then, okay, so we'll set up a team. Let's have a blogging team, you know, because they'll be able to do something. And so we get these great ideas and we, you know, these wonderful stories about us and how awesome we are and how great our business is and how amazing our, our CEO is or whatever the case may be. Um, but what happens, right? Nothing, it's like, oh, well, is it, hello, is anybody there? So we kind of wait and see, well, maybe we'll try this. Maybe we'll produce this and talk about this. But the challenge is, is that we've kind of, again, looking at the old school, saying, oh, well, you must blog. And I'm not saying you shouldn't, but what I'm saying is that there are so many channels out there, right, that we're missing just because we're, we're so focused on what marketers say or how we should do things and that sort of thing. And we're missing that big picture that says, hey, what else do they want to be able to know, like, and trust us? And if we can get them those pieces, will, will they do business with us? And yes, the answer is absolutely. So look outside of blogs. Look outside of how do you actually produce content that engages with them. And again, that's you know, one of those throwaway words. But if you understand the process, if you understand your customer, if you understand what they're doing and your why, right? Step number one is why. What's going to happen? You've now created that infrastructure to say, we need to produce this type of content to engage, to actively engage and actually be able to do something different. Because otherwise, what do we say? You're one click away from disaster in the digital age. Nothing gets any worse than that, right? We're talking a hair's breadth. So, who's ready for disruption? Yay. <laughs> who's ready for disruption? Yay. Who's ready for disruption? Woo! All right. Yes, because this is what we're going to do. We're going to push out competitors. We're going to connect with customers, and we're going to create that long-term value. Okay, that's the critical aspect, because if we're not doing that, we might as well not be in business, right? Who wants to just go on and hum-hum, ho-dee-ho-ho along for like 10 years, five years? Nobody. And the, fa the funny thing is, is that that's what the startup industry is about, right? If you don't produce a brilliant, absolutely remarkable idea, you're gone. So sometimes we need to think a little bit more like startups. So those companies that I mentioned before, right? I'll go through three of them quickly. Kodak, Blockbuster, Borders. And what I've done is I've divvied this up, say, did they have a purpose? And you know what, I'm not the CEO of those companies, so I'm gonna assume yes. Did they understand the patterns? Who agrees with me that said, no, they did not? Yeah, who disagrees? Does anybody disagree? I'm happy to have a discussion on that. Did they understand what was happening with their customer? Did Kodak, they've been around for 100 plus years. Did they understand? No. They didn't see a pattern there at all. They said, hey, we're, we produce film, we produce you know, cameras, all this fantastic stuff. Ah, what's to understand, right? We can do this, this is with our, with our eyes closed. Blockbuster, did they understand the patterns? No. <laughs> Any, anybody say yes? Again, love to discuss that. No? And then Borders, did they see the patterns? Borders, wouldn't you think that they would have been placed just brilliantly well for that stage number two? Yes? But yeah. Your disruptors, I think, are, are one they saw the value of the technology that allowed for them to be the disruptors, but your companies that you identified over here did not see that where they did. 
but I still question that. It's the digital cameras, it's the online movie streaming, and then the uh, technology that allowed ebooks, not Amazon. You're right, that, that's the enabling technology. And I said they're not about that technology, right? They don't need to produce ebook technology to be the player. Borders didn't need to invent the Kindle. They didn't need to understand, you know, or, or create the technology. It was there. Other companies were doing it. That's why Amazon, for example, was able to tie onto that. They identified the technology and said, we're not going to be a technology company. We're going to be a provider of ebooks, right? So there's a very fine differentiator there. Yeah, I just was going to share a comment about Kodak as well. I, I think Kodak, they missed a key opportunity, right? They were a film company. They were an, but what they should have become was an image company. So even if you don't necessarily agree with the matchup with Instagram, Kodak was late to the game in the digital space. They were late with cameras. In fact, they really tried to get into medical imaging. They thought that was going to save the company uh, back in the early aughts. But I think the opportunity there, or the key for me with Kodak, was they did not see the shift to digital imagery. And they were so fixated on tangible images. That's what they missed. It doesn't really matter, in my opinion, whether it was cameras or phones or anything else, but the, that brand at the heart was images, and they totally missed the boat on the move to digital, whatever yeah. that would have looked like for them. And they tried to catch up, right? Right. They got into it too late when they started doing cameras. But, but what did they try to develop? They tried to develop the technology. Right. Right. And again, right. your buyer doesn't give a, <laughs> give a crap about your technology. I'm going to be completely blunt and honest here. They don't. It's how they use it. Right, so Kodak could spend billions of dollars on developing this fantastic technology that does everything, right? You don't need to leave your house kind of thing. But unless that applies, unless that produces that value for that customer, they, they couldn't care if it's the most fanciest camera ever produced in the entire history of the planet. So patterns, again, do they miss these things? Do they understand what it is that's, that, that's happening? And I'm not saying just about your customer, but, but the industry too. Like, what are some of your game changers that are coming down the pipe for your specific industry? Right? Can you identify those to say, hey, yeah, this might be something that, eh, you know, we should probably look, about, look at it. Maybe it's a customer complaint that says, well, why can't you do this? And for those companies that go, oh, well, we know everything. We couldn't care less, right? What does a customer know? You know, you need to look at that and say, well, if this one customer, one out of a million customer, customers rather gives you some feedback, maybe you should take some serious look at that because that's how these trends change. This is how the patterns start to appear to say, well, one person can see that, maybe more can. So take some time. Identify those patterns within your own industry that... It might not be a solid signal to say, yes, everybody's moving to VR or augmented reality headsets or whatever, but it, again, it's, it's what are they going to be doing with that, with the technology? It's not so much that you can put on these glasses and go, yeah, that's cool. I can see everything on stage and I can pull down matrix stuff onto my screen. It doesn't really matter. It's what are the, what are the patterns that they're exhibiting? A platform, right? Did Kodak have a, have a platform? I think they did, right? They had photography, um, they had film, they had cameras, right? So the product was, again, not that you could pick up a, a device and go click, 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 right? It's that you could, you know, share a print. Here, hey, look at my vacation down in Nashville, right? Or my, my trip over to Hawaii, like, wow. Like, who wouldn't love that? That's what they're selling. They're selling memories, they're selling, you know, how, how do you actually connect and share with your family who wasn't there? I'm proud of this thing. I'm proud of that. I want to show you my family, right? So they had a platform. Absolutely. Blockbuster. Now, I don't see it as a platform in terms of, they had actually had a, an interesting slide. There was um, a, uh, a, a, um, a VHS store. I think actually there's one or two blockbusters that still exist, right? In Alaska somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, sorry? There's eight. Okay, fantastic. Are they still corporate owned though, or? No, okay. Anyway, I walked into this marketplace um, up in Canada, and lo and behold, it's like 
the second biggest blockbuster store I've ever seen. It's like VHS tapes. It's like, oh my God, <laughs> going back in time. So did they have a platform? Kinda. Yeah, they were distributors of movies, but did they understand that people hated those bloody things, right? Because it's like you put them in there and the tape goes bad and, and it doesn't work or you're trying to fast forward and rewind and it's like, oh. So what if, what if Blockbuster you know, could have understood how the platform was changing? That people no longer wanted to walk out in minus 40 you know, to switch their videos um, from time to time. And actually I was reading too that Blockbuster actually made more money on late fees. <laughs> Just so you know, I read that like three days ago. It's like Blockbuster made more money on late fees than actually distributing Yeah, absolutely. So that could have been a pattern. It's like your, pa your customer saying, when they come up to you and it's like, oh yeah, here's my video from last week. They go, okay, well that'll be $29.95 in late fees. And you're going, what? You're kidding me, right? I only watched it once. Why should I play, pay you like 30 bucks? Anyway, yeah. So could they identify um, that platform change that was saying, hey, people don't like late fees. Do they really want to pay late fees? No. They just want to sit down. What do you want to do? Sit in your, in your big lounge, your couch, and watch. And that's all you want to do. You couldn't care about anything else. Um, and Borders, did they have a platform? I'm going to say no. Does anybody disagree? Say that yes, they did. They were a fantastic bookseller, right? I mean, Borders, wow, that was, that was a cool store because it was, like, amazing. The interesting thing, of course, is we've seen this ship back with Amazon coming in, but maybe that was more of a strategic decision to say, let's knock out booksellers, let's go online, but let's go back. Let's re-disrupt everything that we've actually done. So I don't believe that Borders had a platform other than the fact that people went there to get books. And again, you look at convenience, you look at understanding, how does this actually work? Do I need to go to the bookstore? Yeah, it's a great environment. But guess what? Some people just want to sit and read. They don't want to go tootling off where they want to get this rare edition from somewhere else around the world, and they actually can't go around the world to get it. And that's what Amazon provided. So process. Again, understanding what is happening in your business, understanding what's going on, where people are going, how can you identify that. And what I've said is that the process is, is, is extremely important, but Kodak, Blockbuster, and Borders didn't actually understand that process, right? Because if they understood the process, they would see that people do want to be able to share without delivering a print, right? So, you know, I don't live in Nashville, so who's here, who lives in Nashville? Or, yeah, okay, so if I don't see you again forever, those photos that we took, and they're okay, don't worry. <laughs> we, nobody else will ever see those pictures. I'm just teasing, so. <laughs> um, so, you know, what is this process that we understand is that we want to share these pictures. I want to share the pictures with my family, right? Back in Australia or back in Canada or to friends in the United States or Europe or wherever, right? I want to be able to share that. They didn't understand that process. They didn't understand how that worked. Again, with Blockbuster, they didn't understand that people hated paying for late fees. Why the heck should you make me pay more money to watch the same movie? I don't know, <laughs> makes sense to me, right? And then Borders again, did they understand the process that grabbing a book from a shelf, you know, flipping through that, who likes going to bookstores? Just kind of seeing what books are there. Yeah, it's a fantastic experience. But can you get every single book that you want, you know, mailed to you uh, next day? No, you can't through Borders anyways. You can obviously through Amazon, and that's the point. Finally, produce. So did Kodak produce? Content, I don't believe so, right? They provided a tool, they provided a mechanism. People produced for them, which is it's just fantastic positioning for them, right? If you could have every single camera in the world runs Kodak film, not obviously for the entire time, but every person ran that film through their camera. Can you imagine, like, that, that's, that's social media. When, you come right, when it comes right down to it, that's what that was. So they weren't producing it. They were producing film, fantastic, great, but they didn't understand how that production of film, they weren't selling the memories, they were selling the technology. Blockbuster, I believe that they produced 
content, right? Because you had blockbuster features, um, that sort of thing. So they understood that, yeah, there's something there. And if you look at it, Netflix, like, wow, they produce some of the most amazing TV programs that are out there. I you know, wouldn't necessarily call them TV programs, but the fact is, they produced. Netflix said, hey, this is a cool idea. Let's take this technology of instant distribution worldwide, doesn't matter where the heck you are. I always travel with my little Apple TV and that thing's got a lot of miles on it um, because you can get it anywhere in the world. Like who wouldn't want to do that and watch some Netflix episodes, some specific ones designed specifically for that. And Borders, did they produce content? Not really. Again, they were, they were selling. It's like, come, come on down to, to Borders and buy your books and get a few little accessories and that sort of thing. They weren't doing anything to say, hey, this is the great technology or this is, we're going to produce something outside of come down to our store and buy some books, right? People were looking for that experience and as every, almost everybody said, they enjoyed that experience. Well, what I would suggest is take these five pieces and fill in a box for yours. Or do you want to be the disrupted or do you want to be the disruptor? Define purpose, define patterns, define your platform, define your process, define what you're going to produce for your audience. And again, took, taking a look at know, like, and trust, how can I actually develop that into my customers? So four final questions that I want to suggest to take a look at, okay? So first thing, take your five pieces and say, where do I fit in? What do I actually need to be able to do to sort of create that environment for disruption, right? That's what we're looking for. We're looking for the environment to say, hey, this is important. This is how we can actually uh, build our business. What is your vision of value for improving the lives of your customer? Again, it's, it's what's in it for me as your customer. What's in it for me? I couldn't care less if you had the best selling process that you've ever produced in your whole entire life, right? Unless it improves the value of me, my life, I don't care. And again, remember this, we're talking about the one click away. So how do we actually do that? What is your vision of value? Not just your value, take the next step. As I said, well, here's your greatest work, what's coming next for you guys? So what is your vision of value that you're going to produce? There is a key difference. What are your key digital strategies and frameworks to get you there? So what steps are you gonna take? Are you going to implement a process? I talked about that as being one of the five, but what can you do to create a framework to say, here's how we're going to create an environment of disruption so that we can go from point A to point, to point Z. <laughs> um, so find out what your key digital strategies are and how are you gonna get there with that. So how will you architect your business and marketing? It's not as easy to say, oh wow, like we've got this great marketing plan, we've got you know, social selling all covered, that's, that's our package over here. It's, it's like, how are you gonna actually architect this? And what we do is I create what I call a strategic architecture to say these are the pieces, these are the element to help define our value and that's what's really important um, with this is how are you going to do that? And again, this isn't something that right down 30 seconds is, oh yeah, I'm gonna be about this type thing. It does take some planning, but you know what? We're in this for the long game. People often come to me and say, or you've probably seen a lot of it, but people want a short solution, but yet they haven't looked at how does that short solution actually affect the business. And that's why you can actually disrupt is if you take the longer term view. How will you put your value into action, okay? I can't say that one enough, but value is great, but how do you put it into action? So what are the, piece, the places you're gonna go? What are the people you're gonna talk to? Who are you gonna see to create that no like, trust triangle? Because again, that's what your customer is looking for. And if they can't find those things, it doesn't matter what you did, it doesn't matter what you've done. Your customers are gonna kinda slowly wither away, slowly drop off, so keep that in mind. So, we're getting one click closer. So if we can sort of change the equation, if I can leave you with one thing, is like, let's, we still, this click is important, right? The digital click is fantastic, but how do we actually move that person a lot closer to understanding that, hey, this is, this is for you, this is the value that we're delivering? Um, 
this is what we can do to understand things and how we can actually produce things together. And this is how you can produce your own disruption. So my final question is, what are your plans? Do you want to be disrupted or disruptor? <laughs>